There we go. Okay. So you guys can see the screen, right? Yes. All right, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, as you guys are coming on, this uh, this video is being recorded, so um, anything you miss, I'll post it. All right, so right now there's a new assignment on um, the Google Classroom, and it's uh, we're going to be doing graphic design posters, uh, movie posters for this assignment. Mm -hmm. So okay. I kind of wrote this thing out. Since I was a child, I've always been <clears throat> captivated by movie posters. Something about you know the big heads, the beautiful sceneries, the way the title looks and um, feeling. I would get when you know I see them. They made me choose from start. I wanted to see the film or not. Over the years, I have worked with many actors and producers to create movie posters and even TV show posters. This experience was one of my favorite times in life, and that's really true. It's a, it's a lot of fun you have when you're creating a movie poster. There's things mm. involved like photography, um, me working with uh, stylists, hair, hair and makeup artists you know, uh, our directors, it's a lot involved. So um, it doesn't, it's not always just simple as graphic design. Um, now today's lesson, we're gonna discuss some movie posters and I'll watch a couple of videos on poster design and learn techniques in photo, um, photo touch up and poster design, Photoshop and Illustrator. Our assignment is students will create two movie posters with your software. So if you're Illustrator, Photoshop or InDesign, you'll be um, creating with your software. Each poster must, um, must um, each, each person must find two posters of a film that has to do with quarantine, pan pandemic, isolation, trapped, alone, and then you recreate these posters. So um, I should say person here. So basically you guys are gonna look online for movie posters and just type in those um, search terms like pandemic or something. And find a poster that you like that you think would be a good challenge for you to recreate and you're going to recreate that poster so um you'll be using images um using your software type tool things like that i'll do an example today to show you what i mean and um pretty much is that that's that the assignment is worth 100 points so you guys be able to turn that in to me as well all right so um let me stop that sharing really quick. Make sure this video is still recording good. All right, so let's talk about some movie posters really quick, the types of movie posters. In graphic design, there's different types of movie posters. Um, some of you guys might have seen this before. Can you guys see that screen? What do you mean? Behind you? Can you see the screen that's up right now? Yes, yes. Oh, oh okay. no, only, only you. I don't see a shared screen at all. Okay, I, let, let me do a share screen. Okay, okay I did, on. yeah. You did it well, um, correctly. It's starting up. Yeah, I see All right. now. See now, good. Okay, so um, with movie posters, um, it's a trip because until I actually really knew and paid, atten paid attention to this, I did not know that movie posters have themes, but it doesn't matter the movie. Like the movie, you don't have to be the same type of movie to have the same theme with the poster, but they do have themes that, get your attention. So you can see right here, these are called the back-to-back. -back. And you guys probably seen a lot of movies with posters that has back-to-back shots, like this is Pretty Woman. And it looks like the back-to-back -back ones always show like a relationship between two people, whether it's good or bad, something like that. But you can see the difference here. Pretty Woman is a way different movie than James Bond. So um, even though they're in two different categories, you still get that that approach is a back-to-back -back approach so you can make a sci-fi movie with the same approach if you have like the person with the laser weapon and then an alien smiling you know back to back with them you know this is a it's a pretty much simple way to do it all right another um another type of movie just like that there we go uh this one is in the bed so you can see like on all of these covers, people are in the bed. Oh, wow. And once again, you can do some, like that pretty woman that we just saw, that yes. was back to back. They could have had a version of this that's in the bed where she's laying in the bed, <laughs> she's laying in the bed and they didn't choose it. Um, I had, when I was working in broadcasting, I was looking for this, uh, a new job and I got an interview and I ended up going to a, a company that made posters and the, um, 
they made movie posters and they had the mummy return the mummy return poster all up in there and i saw so many versions of it i was like dang i didn't even know they made this many versions and that's when they, wow. they explained to me they make various versions with the stuff that's given mm -hmm. to them from the photography and then mm -hmm. the, um the um, studio chooses the one that mm -hmm. they are they're dis distributing with interesting all right this next one is um the big eye <laughs> so you see here a lot of these movies might look familiar like uh this one is godzilla mm -hmm. and then um let's see the avatar mm -hmm. And with big eyes, it's usually um, a lot of negative space around and then for the words. And then sometimes there's things inside of the eye. I, d I don't think I have it in this folder, but there's another one called Shades. Um, if I don't come across it, I'll find it. All right, here's one with the uh, big text on face. Mm. And you see these are kind of very novelty-ish looking movies. It's like a big face with text on there, so they have the name. Uh, another approach that graphic designers use is color, the type of color. Now, with the blues, you get a lot of, um, I would say, films that have to do with nature or animals. And you can see that here, a lot of nature and animals. Also, you get, you'll get blues when you deal with uh, stuff with children. And um, Disney, Disney like to use a lot of blues as well but that's kind of their branding. But this, as far as movie posters are concerned, um, the blues usually focus on nature, animals, stuff like that. Now, don't, don't, um, don't kind of get it confused with this blue because there is another type of blue that's used for movies, like a cooler look, but those are usually for genre type movies. So movies that um, like Underworld or something like that, it's a genre, but this blue is usually for um, nature and, and, and animals. All right, the uh, next one is the female, the cute female in red. Hmm. You probably didn't know so many movies out there that really focused on having the main poster with the female in red. Wow, it's fascinating. Yeah, that's how I felt when I first, um, you know, learned about this. I was like, wow, like, everything, <laughs> everything's on purpose. There's nothing oh, wow. like an accident. Oh. All right, now these right here are the the, um, from the back. So usually with these, they're shot, the, the design is like the show they're going into some kind of adventure or some big world, or they're, they're just left something and they're starting a new. And um, a lot of times these are with action movies. Um, this one right here is a cartoon, Puss in Boots, and you see they even have it with a animated character. So it's an mm -hmm. approach that they take for, um, for these sinister type movies. And um, another thing about it is, this is also a directing approach. Directors like to have, and these type of movies have this actual shot um, to symbolize those things that I said, like going to a big world, like Book of Eli, one of my favorite movies. There's a shot with his, you see him from the back and you can see he's going down this path of destroyed cars and it's just nothing but obese around, you know, in the mm -hmm. background. So for me, I like that kind of movie. So when I see this poster, I'm already like, oh, what is that? I need to see mm -hmm. the trailer so, right. know, so it works that way interesting okay um this next one is called noir of flames noir and flames and noir usually in film is like considered like black and white it's like a a, a lut a group of luts that you will use to turn your picture into this like the contrast or dark uh, the blacks and whites are really strong and usually it's a black and white, but here they put flames on all of the pictures of the noir. Mm. And it gives it that orange or reddish color. Now you also have this kind of um, noir and flames where it's, it's rouge, that's like rouge, I forgot how you call it, but it's basically having red letters on your black and white poster. Mm. And then this one right here is um, the running. So running posters are um, are like very popular, like the movie Taken. We know that movie. Um, Fire Walls, some different movies, and you. It's probably some in here you don't even know, and you probably know a lot of them. There's a the Born Identity that's pretty known, but you notice the person is running. They either run, and they look, mostly look like they're running forward on these. 
but they're running to us from something. This one is nice because there's a head and then there's the person in a train station running with someone inside of the head. Oh, so wow. That's a good one. All right, and then these right here are the sky above and tiny people. So you can see here, let me zoom in a little more. You can see here that there's the big heads in the sky. So there's the clouds and the big heads, and then you see the tiny person inside the shot. I always used to like these posters when I see them. Any posters with a bunch of big heads, they used to really make me <laughs> want to see the movie. <laughs> You you think they have a better description for it than big heads. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, big heads over little bodies. I don't know, yeah, yeah but it's big heads in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> now here's here's the uh three legs. Um usually oh these God. are in those little quirky comedy movies. So mm -hmm. you see through the legs. And it depends on the movie, what's through the legs. Like this one has a sport team, she has a football. Can't see what that is. That's some like politicians or something yeah so like this is a rabbit so it kind of tells a little bit of the story of what you see through the leg you know but the leg through the legs is to get your attention it might not even have anything to do with the film like right. you know, it's just it's just uh we want a certain demographic young teenage boy to want to see this movie <laughs> the through the leg the through the leg one might get their attention <laughs> All right, so that's a few of those. Um, let me stop the share really quick. And um, so with you guys, what I want you to do is, let me go to Google and I'll pull that up for you. All right, so here's my Google. Um, what you'll end up doing is you just go onto Google and then you type in, um, since this is like quarantine, or um, I'll just, let me do um, movie and then poster and then I'll do quarantine. I spell it quarantine. There we go. So they even have a movie called Quarantine with a movie poster. So that's that's already one that if you looked into it, you can find that movie. Let's see, um, I'll put in Trapped. Actually, I'll put in, I'll do it in reverse. Quarantine movie posters that give us some different kind. So it's the same ones. There's a different one right there. I'm gonna move this one over for Illustrator. Illustrator, um, this is something that we will be discussing on how to do that for you guys movie posters. All right, and then uh, let me do a different term. Let's see, um, trap, trapped movie poster. And you can see here, there's a good one of trapped. It's like a person and they have, uh, they're trapped behind a wall and then there's a city right there. So that'll be one that you can do. Now you guys can use pictures off the internet to recreate your stuff, but don't use the images that's already in the poster. Um, you just wanna like, here's a city, use Los Angeles. That's not Los Angeles, so you use Los Angeles. This is funny, 17th of okay. March. 17th of March is kind of when we couldn't go to school no more. <laughs> oh, wow. It's that around that funny. time. <laughs> and then, um, huh? For the for the font or the, the actual logo font that's on the film, you're gonna use your type tool to create something as similar as possible. So if the font is like a thicker font, then you probably will use uh, like a font like uh, Arial, Bold, or Impact or something like that. So go through your fonts or your Adobe fonts and find fonts that's close to it and then work with those. It don't have to be perfectly the same. It just has to get, give us the same kind of mood and idea of the original poster. When you turn them in, you'll have the original poster and next to it, you'll have your version. And you're doing two different posters. Don't forget, two different posters. All right, so I'm gonna go to, um, stop here. I'm gonna go to Photoshop really fast. And then after that, I'll go to Illustrator. Photoshop, share. Make sure this is still recording, good. 
Okay, so let me show some things in Illustrator um, that would help with Illustrator doing some um, doing a movie poster as well. So let me go ahead and open up Illustrator and then do a share for that. Okay, for this we're doing print. And remember this assignment is eight and a half by 11. In Illustrator, it shows as points. This first one, 612, by 792, that is the same as if we were in inches and it was eight and a half by 11. So just remember that's the same. And you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Um, I want everybody posters to be the um, por uh, portrait, not landscape. So don't make any wide posters, make your posters tall. Just like if you was at the movies and you see all the posters are tall on the wall, you would be weird if yours was wide and it couldn't fit it inside the little area that's already designed for it. <laughs> All right, so hit create. And let's give it a second for it to open up the artboard. All right, so here's our Illustrator. I'm going right now, I'm going to Window and I'm going to Workspaces and I'm going to hit Reset just so everything pops into its normal spot. All right, cool. Now, we're doing a poster. First thing I want to do, start off with my type. So I'll type the, type the name of the movie. For this one, it's my movie. Click here, type it. Oh, I made a capital. Now, with Illustrator, it's vector. So if I were to click this and hold the shift key and drag, it drags everything in proportion. And the good thing about it is, it doesn't make it like raster, like blurry or pixelated because as you drag the um, the text, the points are going higher. So if I were to go into the, the actual fonts, you can see I, it's at 125. If I drag this down, see it's at 104. So it, it, it adjusts itself mathematically. So that's the good thing about vector programs. So I have that. Another thing is in Illustrator is you do have layers, which is right here. And you can make more layers, like Photoshop was making all those layers as I was creating images and stuff. But you don't necessarily have to work on multiple layers in Illustrator. Um, you can do everything in the same layer and it creates paths. So each layer will have like a layer inside of it, but those layers are now called paths. So just remember every little line you make is considered a path. So you can click this and it could go like a thousand. So if you're gonna do something particular like say you're drawing a hat and it's gonna have a lot of lines then make a hat layer and draw that hat on that layer so that all your paths up for your hat to be in that layer because you can actually select layers everything on a layer by clicking these little buttons over here so if this layer has 15 things let me click on this layer I'll put some gang of things like that so it has multiple things on this layer as you can see all these things have their own path. Now, if I were to click one, I could click them separate, but if I want to click them all, I just click this thing here and I select everything on this particular layer. So that's the thing about working with um, with uh, Illustrator and layers. You choose if you want to. All right, so now the next thing I want to show you guys is about importing images, just like I did in Photoshop. So we'll go to File, and then we go to Open. And then we're gonna choose our images. So let me see what some logos I make. Get out of there. All right. Um, rock. Graphic design. All right. So I have uh, the Brad Pitt image. For this one, what I'm gonna do is use this here picture I took of the uh, Infinity Got Glove. Now you can see I brought this image and it's gigantic and that's because it's an actual photo and the photos are shot, you know, at such large resolution. I'm gonna hit control minus a few times so I can see it um, scale out. And then um, I'm gonna drag or rescale this to be small enough to fit inside of my actual work area. Now control plus and make that bigger. All right, so now I have this image inside of here. What I'm gonna do is um, with 
Illustrator, you have this thing called live trace and or image trace. And what image trace will do is it traces the picture, it kind of redraws it in vector format. So once you bring an image in, you'll have right here, you have this little button image trace, or you might have it up there. I'm going to click on image trace and it brings down this, this uh, menu that has high fidelity photo, three colors, such and such. So if I had like a picture and it had just three colors in there, I would choose the three colors. Uh, for this one, I'm going to choose, I want to get as much as close to this one as possible. It's not going to be exactly the same, but let's just do high fidelity, um, high fidelity photo. And now it's processing and it's figuring out um, what colors to make what, how many paths, everything to make this image the way it's going to be. The larger the image, the longer it takes, so keep that in mind. But it also has more detail. Okay. There it goes. So it did it. Let me zoom in and see. All right. So now the next thing you do is you click expand. Now that I clicked expand, it actually broke all these things up into their own little vector points. So if I go to, remember the tools in Illustrator, the first tool is the selection tool, allows you to select the whole thing. But the direct select tool, I'll click off, allows you to select things separately. So direct. So this is cool because like, say if I wanna get rid of this background of this chair, now I just have to just click on there, drag in the area and just like delete. Now there's a way to go into tools and I could choose, I could select a color and I could choose um, colors that are the same. But if some of those colors are inside of here, I don't want to delete them. So right now I'm just kind of going a little manual. And I'm just, just while with the direct select tool, I'm just clicking on the outside, dragging over the stuff that I want. And it's finding all the stuff connected. And then I'm the hitting delete key. Then right here, I'll do that same thing, delete key. All right, let me zoom back out, control minus. All right, I'm happy with this for this poster. So I'll just move this like that. And go back to my layers, cool. All right, I must have deleted my, um, my name. So let me just rewrite the name of the movie. All right, so I got my movie name there. Now, another thing in um, in Illustrator is you have uh, different filters and stuff you can work with. Right now, I'll put the mouse here and just rotate this a little bit I'm with the hand. And then, um, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a background gradient color for this. It's gonna show like a lot of ugliness in there, but I just wanna show you guys how to do it. So um, I'm gonna go to my layer and I'm gonna create a new layer. That layer is above this layer. So if I did a background color on it, it would cover this. So I'm gonna drag this layer beneath by clicking and dragging with that line, pop it in there. And now I'll go over to my shapes area with the rectangle shape. And I'm gonna drag a rectangle in this whole area to fill this with color. Now in Photoshop, what you would do, you would normally just fill it with color by clicking on the background. But in Illustrator, you have to make the shape to fill it with color. And I'll give this a gradient color. New in my arm. Oh, because I have this image. What's going on here? Ah, that's what happened. I need to move this image over here. That's why I didn't have the my, my word. So let me move this, drag it over. So don't freeze on me now. It's such a large file, I think it's not liking what I'm trying to do. Okay, cool. There you go. Good. All right. Actually, I like it like that too. All right. So now let me just go back here and create the background again. Bam.
and I'll make the background color a gradient like that. And um, let me drag the layer. So somehow I had it in my path. I just dragged the path down like that. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so you can see how this looks. Um, I'm not liking how that white is in there, so I could delete most of this. Just click it in there and delete it. I'm gonna leave that. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go to my gradient and I'm gonna change this to a radial gradient. I have to click on it first, radial gradient, just like that. And then this area in here, I'm gonna actually make it white. Just because it's driving me crazy. that and I'll move this over. Yeah, I could work with that. All right, and then there's my my movie. Now inside of Illustrator you also have um I think I had mentioned it a little bit ago. You have um, effects and filters. So if you go up to effects, and I can put something like, say if I wanna put a drop shadow, click on it, and there's your drop shadow. You click the preview on and preview off to see the changes that you make to your drop shadow. I'll just hit okay to leave that there. Another thing is if you wanna make more cooler drop shadow, you could use something like your ellipse tool drag it like this and then once you do that you go up to effects stylize and feather and then you put a little feather on there and it creates kind of like this falling shot and if you want it a little lighter then you just go up to opacity up here click opacity and you can drop your opacity down some to make it lighter so that's one little thing. Now, I like my infinity thing and I wanna put something around it that's cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little circle like this. And it's a gradient as you can see, I'll get a different gradient. Let's see, let's go here. I'm gonna go to my libraries. Here, let's go to this library and I'm gonna go to gradients and I'm gonna choose this first one and there's some gradients right there. So what I selected, I could choose on any of these gradients. I'll just choose one like that, cool. All right, so you see here, I have this little circle. I wanna make the circle go all the way around the hand. So I wanna put it kind of in the middle. And with this, what I'll be doing is using the rotate tool. So over here, the rotate tool, you click on something, click on the rotate tool, it allows you to rotate. You've kind of seen that rotate a little bit. <laughs> but if you actually hold down the control key and click, you're able to see the anchor point inside of there. So if I put the mouse here, hold down the control key, sorry, the alt key, and click, it opens up this and it says, hey, based on where you click, do you wanna rotate this? And then you can say like, yeah, you could do a preview. So see right here, if I do 45 degrees and then click preview, you can see how far it looks 45. If I do 22.5, then you can see it moves it that much, which is half of 45. So what I wanna do is I want to have the copy move here. If I hit okay, it's just gonna move the first one. Well, if I hit copy, it copies the first one to that new location. Now the final step I have only have to do is control D. So in Illustrator, the cool thing about Illustrator is control D actually duplicates your last move. Since I haven't done anything, that last thing I did was 22.5 degree copy. So if I control D, it does it again, and I hit control D and I'm gonna keep hitting control D over and over until I'm able to get that perfect circle there.
now that I have that, I don't want them going here. So I'll just click on this one, delete it, this one and delete it, and this one and delete it. So now I have that look like that. That looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to, I could change the gradients and stuff. But I was just giving you guys a good idea of what you want. Now, another thing is when I added this background, I have no stroke. So if I click here and I decide to, hey, I want to put like a gradient stroke on there. I can make the stroke thicker and create my actual border of my um, picture. But another thing is I could go in here and I could choose how my borders look, how my, my stroke line looks based on choosing these things, these different little simple um, styles. Also, you have basic, you have like a actual borders in here. So I could do like actual borders and make that bigger so you can see right there. And um, there's a library. So we we'll go to the library and see borders. I'll just click dash so it opens. You can see all of these borders. So since that's selected, when I click it, you should be able to see the border. So something to have fun with um, is knowing that you know all these things exist inside of Illustrator. Yeah. And the way I found these was I went up here. First, I clicked on my background image, then I went up here to this brush definition, and I just dragged down to this here folder where you see like look like some books in one leaning. You click that, and you have arrows, artistic borders, and so on. I just chose borders. If I'd have chose arrows, then it'd give me arrows, and just make my line have arrows at the end. So you see the arrow right there. I need to put this up so see like that but i wanted just borders so i just went to borders choose some different borders here some indigenous borders that's cool now what i'm noticing though with this border is the border is i'm gonna hit delete really fast here see the border is outside of my area right there see that i mean control z see how it's going outside so I want to make that go inside. So I'm gonna pull that down like that. Notice how the background shows that white right there. And that. So that's something you're gonna to have to deal with with the borders. Um, let me see if the stroke allows for inside stroke. Photoshop allows inside stroke. Yeah, I don't see any inside stroke. I'll find out if there's an inside stroke, uh, just like Photoshop, where it allows for the stroke to go on the inside of the the um the line instead of the outside. I'm sure there is. I just have to find that out. So you can see there, I just made a pretty cool poster. I mean, my font is ugly. I would choose a different font. I probably would make my font a little more golder, you know, gold looking and thicker in capital letters. Um, for this style of poster, if it says something like home alone or something. But um, just to show you guys the things that um, the things that you will use to make something like this. I'm going to do one more face um, inside of here, live trace. So I'm going to go here and let's close this out. Let's open. Let's do the Brad Pitt face. All right, so we have Brad Pitt face here. I just brought it in and I wanna do a live trace when I'm closing out all these boxes, these windows I don't need right now. So click on them. There's the image trace, click there. For this one, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna go with six colors. It's really gonna look way different, but I'm going for an artistic approach. So let's see what happens. I like that. That's a little more to what I want. Now with the six colors now, here's just another thing about the image trace. Once you do the image trace, you see the drop down, you have this little menu here. When you click this image trace menu, it actually opens up, it allows you to like add more colors like that. And as you do each thing, it, got, it has to do it. So don't do a lot of them at once. And then you also have advanced. And so now you have paths. So I'm gonna move my paths. Let's see how the paths change. 
on that. And then you have corners. I'll move the corner this way. Get them a little more fun. And then noise, I'll move the noise all the way so you can see drastic, if there's a drastic. So you see the noise, and I like that noise. I'm gonna go back that way. All right, so say, I like, say you're really happy with this look right here. The next step would be to expand it. Right now, it turned the picture into a to a ve uh, vector, but we need to expand it so we can actually be able to mess with our paths. So hit expand, and there it is. So now we have different paths for all of these these things here. So if I use my direct select tool, you see I can click on each of these colors like that. And I could kind of get away, get rid of these colors because since I did six colors, it made the sky more solid colors. Just drag like there and bam. So it's a few little colors around, but kind of get the point. All right, now um, with his body, I might want to erase some of that out. Fine, since it's a vector now, I could go to my eraser. I can make my eraser um, brush larger with clicking the curly brackets. So on your keyboard, there's a minus sign and a plus sign. And under there, there's curly brackets next to the P, the letter P. The left curly bracket makes your brush is smaller. The right curly bracket makes your brush is larger. This saves you from going in there, double clicking and having to type in sizes of brushes. So now what I'm gonna do is just gonna go like this and just erase that out like that. All right, that's cool. I like that. So now I switch back to my selection tool so I can select the whole thing. The direct select tool will only select a partial, partial level. So I hit control C for copy. I go to my other window that my, my picture in, I control V like Victor for paste. The reason we do control V for paste is because control P is for print. All right, so this looks good. Uh, having him there and then I'll just move to my movie down like that. And I'll change the color of the letters, the white. Also, since Brad Pitt was the last thing I brought in, he covers everything because I'm working on the same layer. Notice how he's above all the stuff in that layer's path. So if I wanted to move my the My Movie above everything, I could just click on the My Movie, right click and choose Arrange, Bring to Front. And that brought, that brought it all the way above everything. So you can do arrangements with all of that stuff that way. I no longer like the font since it looks better with Brad Pitt in the, in the fist. So over here I'm working, this is the character panel. That's kind of like in Photoshop. And there's more things to your character panel with these three little buttons when you hit more options. You have to click that and there you go. So you can see here, I can make it all caps now. And then I can play with my fonts and everything. So if you ever try to find that, more options is it. I'm gonna use this font that I actually hate. <laughs> so I used to use this font all the time when I first started working with Word. So I got, I overused it, but it might look good here. Not too bad. And then um, down at the bottom, I'll just type starring Brad Pitt. I like the shadow right here for him too. It looks cool. Brad Pitt's like my top five favorite movie actors, by the way. <laughs> Pretty good. 
I don't think I've seen a movie he did that I didn't like. All right. Here we go. Oh, that looks good. We got to go change this now. Make this uh, back to black. I'm going to just keep it simple color scheme. And then um, the font, that font's over. There we go. We just go with simple. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, turning into a horror movie. Right, exactly. <laughs> see the see how just a simple move like that font could just change the whole idea of the movie. I know. That's too big. Yeah, I like the uh, the t the Times Roman look more for this cover. Yeah, we go with I right, we go with this here. There you go. I like that. It's not bad. Um, just for a non thought out project. All right. So once you have your movie finished and you you just save it, you go to uh. Actually, I want to make sure my artboard is right. So uh, here it is. So I go to my artboard tool, and I'm going to drag this. Uh oh, get it wrong. And the reason I'm making sure it's fitting my artboard because once I save it as a JPEG file it will cut off the areas outside of the artboard. So now the areas in the, everything's in the artboard, even the stroke. I kind of like that white background right there. If I want to change it, then I would just make a new layer at the bottom and put a color behind there and I would make it not white, but that's cool. That works for me. Last thing I want to do though is on his nose, let me zoom in, control plus is zoom. On his nose is blue. So I'm going to use the direct select tool, click on that blue area, then I'm going to go to the eyedrop tool, click on it, and then click on the color. And that filled it that color. I'll do it one more time in case oh. I missed it. All right, so notice his nose have the reflection of light and it vectored into blue because only did six colors. I want to select just this area. So I choose the direct select tool. I click on the actual area to select it. Then I choose the eyedropper tool, which finds color. And I click that, and whichever color I click on, was selected will be filled in that color. See that? So I'll just do it like that, and now let me control minus, and that looks better to me. Click off of there, and you can see it's a little blue on his chin. Let's get rid of that. So I'm just gonna drag zoom to his chin. Direct select tool. Click there. I'm gonna click I for the eyedropper tool, and there it is. And then direct select tool shortcut is A. So I'll click A, click on direct select. I'm gonna click on that shot and then I click, there we go. We got it done. Not bad. All right, so now I'm gonna save this, go to, so I should have saved this a long time ago. So I really was working wrong because the first thing you wanna do is save your file before you start. So you can be saving this as you go. But I'm gonna save this my movie. It's an Illustrator file, so even though I named my movie in the same folder with Photoshop file, it's not going to overwrite or anything because they're two different types of files. So I'm going to put my movie AI because when I save it as a um, as a um, flatting file, which is a JPEG file, if it named it my movie, it'll overwrite my Photoshop one. So save that file. In Illustrator, when you're saving, you can choose like to go lesser versions and stuff, but we're all working on the cloud, so just keep it 2020 for now. Hit OK. And now that it's saved as the actual file, if I want to come in here and make changes, now I want to save it as a flattened file, one that I will submit to, to someone. So file, this time you have to do export. So remember this, in Illustrator, you do file save as to save it as an Illustrator file or EPS. Um, why is it EPS? Save as a yeah, Illustrator file, PDF file, EPS files. But if you want to save it as a compressed file that you're going to put on the internet or send to someone email, you have to go file export and choose export as. We'll talk export for screens a little later, but right now we do export as. 
and then just choose um, what you want to export it as. We're doing JPEG. Sometimes we do J, uh, PNG. Some people might say TIFF and stuff, but that's if you're dealing with a printer that's printing something super large, things like that. But for this class, we're going to work with JPEGs. And I'm going to hit export. Last thing, a window pops up. Sometimes your window may be on five, and this might be on 72. That's too small for, uh, for this project. You want to have this at full resolution, 300, and have this turned all the way up. Because you're working in the file size already, 8.5 by 11. So it'll send it nice and big when you print it out. Hit OK.